granddaughter stood up and showed me how tall she was. She, she's 11 now. She said, you remember when I was a little baby? That was a perfect song. I, I, I wish Becky could have heard this. this. That was a perfect song to send to Jennifer because I wrote in that Facebook post to her. I said, God, God and all these people are full of love and mercy and grace. So we need to pray for that young lady that she'll get in church and grow as a Christian. There's so many, so many people I know that claim they're Christians and they say they're Christians and they, they post things on Facebook, but they, they just don't go to church. I don't understand it. The Bible says that as believers that we grieve differently than those that are not believers. So when we lose loved ones, we don't grieve like non-believers because we know there's a heaven and the reality of heaven where those people are going to go if they know the Lord. So sometimes we even joke about it. So my little joke today is joking about that. And it says this. Somebody wrote, after my funeral, I want one of my friends to take my phone and text everyone, thanks for coming. <laughs> that might get a few little surprises there. You know, from time to time when we were worshiping at church, you will hear someone's phone ringing in their purse or in, in somebody's pocket and so forth. One time we were just given the invitation and somebody's phone was ringing. When we got finished, I said, we should have sung, Jesus is calling. Uh, I, I know I've shared this story before with you. It's been many years ago. We, I was car shopping for a, another car. And I was dealing with a, a car salesman, and his name was Jesus. Well, Jesus is Hispanic for Jesus. And, um, and I knew his name was Jesus, but a couple of days later, I was driving down the road, and my phone rang, and I looked over at it, and my phone said, Jesus. I, I, I said, Jesus is calling me, but it was Jesus. So the title of my message today is Jesus Calls Us. Jesus calls each and every one of us to follow him. And he calls us the same way that he called his disciples to abandon all and to follow him. And oh, how thankful and how grateful that we should be that he has called us. After all, look at where we would be if not for his call. Where would we be without Jesus? If not for the call of Jesus upon our lives, then where would we be? We would still be lost like so many in this world today that are deceived. If not for his cause, call, we would not be forgiven of our sins, cleansed of our unrighteousness, and given the righteousness of Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. If not for the call of Jesus upon our lives, then to spend eternity with him in heaven would not be an option. But he did call, to, call us. He has called us unto salvation. And he laid down his life upon the cross to take away our sins and to give us his very life. I'll never forget back in February of 1969, so I'm talking a long, long time ago, but when as a young boy, my mom and dad shared the gospel with me and I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life and to save me. And I, I remember crying as I prayed that prayer because I, I, I understood even as a young boy what was going on. And he has called you also at some time in your life to turn from your sins and to follow him by trusting in him as your personal Savior. Now maybe you answered that call many years ago. Maybe you answered it for the first time. Maybe you answered it recently. Maybe you answered it the first time that he called you. Or it may have taken many, many attempts for him to get your attention. I knew a guy one time that told me he got saved on the 17th verse of Just As I Am. Remember sometimes those altar calls would go on and on and on and on trying to get people to come and trust in Christ as their Savior. Uh, maybe you are here this morning and you have yet to answer that call. It's not too late as of right now. You can be saved today. All you have to do is ask for the forgiveness of your sins and trust in Him as your Savior. But if you put it off, once again, it may be too late by this time tomorrow. The Bible says we have no promise of tomorrow. If you answer his call upon your life and accept him as your Savior and Lord, then your life will never be the same. 
Uh, he will give you eternal life and he will give you abundant life and there's nothing nothing whatsoever that can take that away from you. Once you answer his call, it's a done deal forever and ever. So the first way that Jesus calls us is to salvation. And it is permanent. It is permanent. Look with me in your, in your sermon notes in the bulletin. John 10, 27 through 30. These are words of Jesus in the Gospel of John. It says, My sheep listen to my voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I'm waiting on the train whistle. I'm sorry. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Praise God that when we answer His call upon our life to trust in Him and what He did for us on the cross, that there is nothing that we can do or nothing that anyone else can do, not even the devil, that can take it away from us. Praise God that when He calls us and saves us, that it is for now and we can't mess it up. Nothing can take that away from us. There's nothing that we can do to earn our salvation but by faith to trust in Him and His righteousness. And there's nothing that we can do to lose it after we receive it. When Jesus calls us, it is for good. He's never going to trade us to another team or to send us back to where we come from. He keeps us forever. Amen? Don't ever let the enemy... Uh, the devil will tell you a bunch of lies that we can lose our salvation or do anything to mess it up or to undo it. It was taken care of at Calvary when Jesus shed his blood to wash us of our sins and nothing can undo that. We belong to him and nothing can snatch us out of his father's hand. Nothing. Uh, you you want, may want to hang on to those sermon notes, that, those first Bible verses that we just read. Nothing can snatch us out of the Father's hand. Now once we're saved, if we choose to not go to church, to not grow as a Christian, uh, we're still saved, but we're going to miss out on the abundant life and all the many blessings that He wants to give to us. But I, we believe, as bad as we believe in eternal security. Hebrews 13, 5 says He will never leave us nor forsake us. Charles Stanley wrote a book one time entitled Eternal Security. And he did such a great job writing this book because there was a time in his life that he did not believe in it. And God showed him differently. God opened his eyes to the truth. And he wrote this book called Eternal Security. And it's full of scripture after scripture explaining that it's, that it's eternal, that, that it's secure. Now this does not give us a free ticket to sin. Or to live however we want to. It's our choice to live the abundant life that Christ has promised us. Or to live, live a sinful life along with sin's consequences. Along with sin comes consequences. Second of all then, with that, with that call upon our life, Jesus has called us to be his disciples. Jesus has called us to be his disciples. Just like he called those 12 men to be his disciple, about, disciple about 2,000 years ago when he was walking this earth and ministering here on this earth before he went to the cross, he calls us today to follow him. Uh, praise God that he doesn't just call us unto salvation, but that he also calls us to become his disciples, to follow him and to become like him in all that we do. Uh, now, this does not happen over, overnight, but it takes a, a lifetime to be conformed into the image of Christ, but it begins when we submit to his call to become his disciple. He calls us to drop what we're doing and to follow him. Uh, just like he called those 12 men that were the original disciples, they all had things going on in their lives that they had to drop. Immediately, They had to drop him and they began to follow him for the next three and a half years that he ministered on this earth before he laid down his life that we might have life. 
And, and then they continue to follow him and to carry on his work even after he died upon the cross and was buried and then raised from the dead. Jesus appeared to three disciples and, and others, uh, these disciples and others after his resurrection, just as he had promised. And the Holy Spirit came to walk with them in his absence. And this is how I believe it still works for us today. If and when we answer his call upon our lives to follow him and become his disciples, then the Holy Spirit will guide us and teach us to become more and more like him every day. He's not going to call us and then just leave us out there to figure it out all by ourselves. No, it's more personal than that. Thank God we don't have to go through the hardships and trials and tribulations of life on our own. Uh, we can lean upon the Lord to help us through the tough times that we're seeing in this world today. But let me ask you an important question this morning. Have you answered his call upon your life? First of all, have you answered his call upon your life for salvation? Have you trusted in Christ as your very own personal Savior? If not, then today would be a wonderful time to do that and to be given the gift of eternal life. And if you have and if you have answered that call, and there has come a time in your life that you repented of your sins and asked Jesus to come into your life and to save you, have you answered his call to become his disciple and to abandon all and to follow him? The two go hand in hand. He calls us all. He's not going to call some of us to salvation and others to discipleship. He wants all of us to drop what we're doing and follow him. So let's look at just one instance in scripture where he called some of his disciples. There's bulletins uh, on the back table that has the scripture verses listed in them. Uh, Matthew 4, 18 through 22. This is just one instance in scripture where he called some of his disciples. And it says this. Matthew 4, beginning in verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once, think about those words, at once they left their nets and they followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Uh, they were in a boat, and there were uh, their father Zebedee with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. And Jesus called them, and immediately, immediately, like, they left their boat, and they left their father, and they followed him. Jesus is still in the business of calling disciples today. And he's calling us to abandon all and to follow him and to become fishers of men. It's not possible to become a disciple of Christ and to follow him and not become fishers of men. And to tell others about Jesus and to lead others to salvation in Christ. Every born again believer wants to be known as a disciple of Christ. One who is Christ-like, one who is being conformed into the image of, of Christ, but with that, we are to become fishers of men and women and boys and girls. That, that's part of being a disciple, is to make more disciples of others by leading them to the cross. And we all want to be obedient to this one that has laid down his life that we might be saved and have eternal life and abundant life. No true Christian would refuse and say no. Now, I believe that we all want to follow Christ. We all have the desire uh, to follow Christ. But are we willing to become completely sold out and follow Him 100% and not just some? That's the question this morning. Are we willing to follow Him 100% to give Him all and not just some? Uh, when Jesus calls us, there are many things that he's calling us from and many things that he is calling us to. Uh, we can't become disciples of Christ without making some changes in the way that we live our lives and even the way that we think and act in every area of our lives. We are to be different than the world. We live in a world that is falling for every kind of deception.
deception that they're uh, imaginable. We were talking in Sunday school about some things that are just unbelievable of how the younger generation is just being deceived and into following things that just are not true. If we're going to answer this call upon our lives to be his disciples, then we must consider the cost. Forsaking all, we must follow him and let go of the things of our past and let go of the things of this world. These first disciples we see here not only left their boat, but they also left their father also. So there's several points that I want to mention this morning that I believe to be a part of God's call upon our lives. I think there's seven of them. Beginning with number one, Jesus calls us to leave all sin. Jesus calls us to leave all sin. Notice that I did not say Jesus calls us to leave some sin, but all sin. So let's get personal this morning. Is there some unconfessed sin in your life that you are not or have not been willing to let go of. Now people don't like it when the preacher goes, gets to meddling and starts preaching on sin. That can make us uncomfortable. Uh, uh, unless he is just concentrates on the sins of other people instead of us. While well, he can preach on abortion and homosexuality and other gross sins that most of us have never struggled with and we will amen him to death. Or he can preach on the sin of adultery because we would never do that unless he brings out the truth that Jesus said that if you look at a woman and lust after her, that you've committed adultery in your heart. Or he can preach on the sin of murder because none of us would never do that unless he brings out the fact that Jesus said that if you hate someone, that you have mur committed murder in your heart. What about bitterness? Has anybody committed murder in their heart lately? When Jesus calls us to follow him, he, he calls us to follow all sin. Look with me at Proverbs 6, verses 19, 16 through 19. In, in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, we find these words. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man or a woman who stirs up dissension among brothers. Study those verses this week and think about that. What, what about these common sins that affect us all? Uh, we're not too so quick to say amen when the preacher gets meddling into our business and talking about our pride or our lack of honesty uh, or our anger and our jealousy and, and our bickering and our cursing and our playing the lottery and gambling and on and on and so forth. Uh, Jesus calls us to leave all sin. You can't be a true Christian and your lifestyle just make a mockery out of God. Number two, Jesus calls us to serve him better. Jesus calls us to serve him better. What are you doing in the way of serving the Lord within the local church, or within the community? Now, here's a few questions for us to consider. Number one, think about this this morning. What if everyone in the church attended church as often as you do? Would we have that many people here? Uh, number two, what if everyone else in the church gave and tithed the same amount that you gave? Would there be enough money to pay the bills? Number three, what if everyone in this church invited people to come to church with them as often as you do? Would we ever have any visitors? Number four, what if others in the church were involved in ministry as much as you are? What if everyone... Uh, worked in ministries around the church and, and taught Sunday school and so forth and called and checked on the sick as much as you do. Would anything get done? How about encouraging others at church instead of complaining all the time? Uh, we all need to, to stand up and become more committed to serving Him better. 
Jesus called all of us, again, all of us, not just some of us, to serve him better. So let's follow him completely like real disciples. Number three, Jesus calls us to a deeper prayer life. Jesus calls us to a deeper prayer life. How is your personal prayer life? Uh, this is one that probably convicts us all. I, I pray a lot. I pray all day long, but I'm too guilty of doing it on the run. Well, we all need to slow down a little bit and spend a little more quality time with Jesus on our knees. Uh, focus on the task at hand, the miracle of prayer. Uh, do we believe that God will answer our prayers like He's promised if and when we pray according to His will? Uh, do we have enough faith when we pray? Uh, do we pray for others as much as we pray for ourselves? Do we pray selfishly? Uh, do we lift one another up in prayer, not just when there are physical needs, but do we pray for one another spiritually? Uh, do we pray for those that are lost like we should, those that are lost and deceived? And if we do, do we pray, just pray for them, or do we pray that God will use us that will be the ones to lead them to Jesus. If Jesus answered all your prayers this week, would anyone be on their way to heaven? Think about that. I'm going to read that again. If any, if Jesus answered all your prayers this week, would anybody be on their way to heaven? Are we willing to pray that God will show us, His will for our lives, and that His will should be carried out no matter what that means, or do we think that our agenda is more important than His agenda? Uh, when He calls us to follow Him, that is when we are supposed to go by His agenda, not ours. Are we that willing? Number four, Jesus calls us to read the Bible more. Jesus calls us to read the Bible more. When Jesus called us to follow Him and become His disciples, then that calling comes with an instruction manual. We don't have to wonder what to do, and thank God it does. It has all the answers for life. We know exactly what we are to do and what we are not to do in order to become a great disciple. And most of all, how to carry out a personal relationship with Him. This is how God talks to us and guides us through life by His inerrant and infallible Word. And Jesus doesn't call us to just carry it around with us, or, but to read it and to follow its advice. We're, we're not talking about leaving the Bible in the car all week so you'll make sure you have it on Sunday, but carry it with you and read it and use it. And do what it says and you will be blessed beyond measure. And no, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to just say, well, I'll listen to about half of what the Bible says, but the other half, I'm not sure about that. I, I want to do things my way. No, it doesn't work well to obey. It doesn't even work well to obey 95% of it. It's all or none. We either, we either follow him wholeheartedly or we don't follow him at all. And we can't fool him. He knows how uh, he knows our hearts and he knows our feelings. Number five, Jesus calls us to trust him implicitly. Now, this is not a spelling test. I know that's a hard word. Jesus calls us to trust him implicitly. Following God and following his word, the Bible, is not a heavy burden. Once you do it and get a taste of it, you'll realize how good God is. And how he knows what's best for us is the key to the abundant life. Jesus promised us in John 10, not only eternal life, but abundant life in this lifetime. It's not just a bunch of do's and don'ts, but by trusting him implicitly, we see that he knows how to take care of us and love us and show us mercy and grace more than we can even begin to imagine, more than we can fathom. Uh, we can't be true followers of Christ and not trust Him for everything in life. Uh, nobody's ever followed someone that they did not trust for the direction that they were going in. If that's the case, they would not be following Him. They would be them. They would be going off in their own direction. So what about you this morning? Do you trust Him in everything? 
Do you trust him when it seems like you're, the world's falling in around you and everything's going wrong? Do you trust him when hardships come? Do you trust him when things are going great? Do you trust him in everything? And, or instead, are, are you doing your own thing and going up in your own direction? Is it his plan for your life? Or is it your plans? Number six, Jesus calls us to witness more consistently. Jesus calls us to witness more consistently. We've already talked about the fact that Jesus calls his disciples to be fishers of men. Have you been doing any fishing lately? Have you been sharing the gospel of Christ or the love of Christ with others? True followers of Christ will tell others about him. It's not meant to be a secret. But when's the last time that you shared your faith or your testimony? Or your story with someone else is telling them about what Jesus has done for you. How he saved you. How he pulled you out of the miry pit of sin like he did me. Invite them to come to church with you. We must do it daily. <laughs> Let me ask you this. <coughs> who are you praying for right now who needs the Lord? Who are you praying for right now who needs the Lord? You know, I've got these little homemade tracks that, you, that we've been giving out for 14 years now. There's some on the table in the back, and there's some on the front row. They're, they're called Eternity Past and Eternity Future. I hope and pray that you'll take some today off the front row or off the back table. And take them with you this week and give them, give them to somebody. Give them out to someone. Number seven, the last one, Jesus calls us to greater faithfulness. Jesus calls us to greater faithfulness. If we want to follow Jesus... And be like Jesus, then we will be faithful. Because, oh, he is so faithful to us. Amen? We sing that song, great is his faithfulness. He's so faithful to us. Faithful in all that he's called us to do. And, and let me tell you this. He'll never call you to do anything that he won't equip you to do it. If somebody asks you to teach Sunday school or to sing a song or, or, or to do whatever... And he's not going to call you to do anything that he will not equip you to do it. He's not just going to put you out there on, a, on your own. He'll equip you to do it. Great is his faithfulness. Jesus calls us. Jesus calls us unto salvation. And then he calls us to be his disciples. And he calls us to do these seven things that we talked about this morning. I'm going to repeat them. Jesus calls us to leave all sin. Jesus calls us to serve him better. Jesus calls us to a, a deeper prayer life. Jesus calls us to read the Bible more. And Jesus calls us to trust him implicitly. And Jesus calls us to witness more consistently. And Jesus calls us to greater faithfulness. So once again, have you answered his call? Most importantly of all, have you answered his call? To salvation, have you trusted in Christ as your personal Savior? And then have you called, have you answered His call to become a disciple? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we've had this morning looking into your precious word. And Father, we just thank you so much for calling us, Lord. We thank you that Jesus came and laid down His life that we might have life. And Father, we just thank you that uh, as we treasure our way through this world, this difficult world, this mean world that we live in, this world that's, that seems to, to have more non-Christians than Christians, or, uh, Lord, that we, we, we're not alone. We know that you have called us. Those of us that have trusted in you as our Savior, there, there had to come a time in our life where you wooed us and called us to become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for what he did for us upon the cross. But Lord, we know that it doesn't end there. We don't just get saved one day and then 50 years later go to heaven. Lord, we know that you're calling us to be your disciples and to follow you and to, to serve you. And Lord, I just pray that each one will understand that life becomes significant. And life has meaning and has fulfilling and is full of joy and peace once we start following you and growing in our relationship with you as a Christian. Lord, we just thank you for your call. I pray for each one of us here today that we would answer your call and serve you more. In Jesus' sweet and precious 
In holy name we pray. Amen. Our invitation hymn is hymn number 411. If you'll stand with me and we'll sing, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Hymn number 411. 